Welcome back to the ORCAD X Presto tutorial series. In this video, we're going to cover how to create a board outline either from scratch by drawing it or how to import a board outline from a DXF file. Now, if you're following along or if you've lost track and you're following along, uh, you can download the how to underscore board outline.prd file and then go through all the steps as shown in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to look at is how to create a custom board outline simply by drawing it out on the canvas. Maybe you just are not sure what you want your outline to be yet, or uh, maybe you need to even change it halfway through your design process. Uh, to do so, go ahead and select the ECO at the top and select the draw design outline. You'll notice that because we're in the draw design outline command, we get this little helper window in the top right corner of our canvas. We can use this to cycle through the different options for this command. For example, we can just draw a straight rectangle or a circle. In this case, let's go ahead and draw a polygon. Now we can draw it anywhere on the canvas. If you want a grid to help you out while you're drawing your board outline, you can select this grids drop down here and turn the visibility on. And then if you need to do any snapping to any other objects that are on your canvas, there's a similar drop down here under snapping. You can turn snapping on or off. Snap to grid points is what we want to keep on right now. And then the different sort of objects that you can snap to. Check or uncheck these little boxes in this grid here. The alignment guides we'll talk a little bit about later. So to start drawing, simply just left click anywhere on the canvas. Now this should snap to a grid point. And you'll notice that we have this little line and an indicator of what the length of the line is, as well as the angle at which we're drawing. So we can start to draw in a straight line and then use this option here to switch between a straight line and an arc, for example. So we can add an arc to our board outline. Let's just add, keep adding a couple arcs. Now this isn't going to be our final board outline up importing that from a DXF file, but I'm just doing this as an example to show how you can draw something nice using the built-in functionality. If the alignment guides ever get in your way, uh, you can turn them off under snapping alignment guides or simply just zoom in to where the alignment guide isn't noticed. So there's our board outline. I'm going to turn the grids off so it's a little easier to see. Let's turn the brightness up to 100. Now that the board outline is done, let's go ahead and select it and see some of the options that we have for it. So you'll notice here we see the location. These are the coordinates for our board outline. What we can also do is actually set the design origin. So by default, when we start an ORCID Expresso project, the design origin is way in the bottom left corner. You can kind of see it poking there on the canvas. Sometimes in your design, you might actually want your origin to be in the bottom left corner of your design outline. And to do that, simply click here on your design outline, select pick origin location. And if we look at our snapping options, we already have the segments vertex turned on. So if we click around here, it should snap to this vertex. And there we go. If I click on there, we see that the origin is now at this intersection, the bottom left corner of our board outline. Now these two additional lines that you see here, these are the uh, conductor keep in and the component keep in. You don't actually have to draw these manually. What Presto will do is generate these automatically for you, again, in these properties at the bottom right corner. You can turn them on or off, depending on if you need them, or you can simply just type in a number. So for example, if we need to have a little more of a conductor keep in, we can set this value to 75, and you'll see that it automatically gets adjusted on our board outline. In this case, I'm gonna set the conductor keep in to 100, and the component keep in to 150. And you'll notice that it automatically takes on the contours of our board outline because it's basically just a contraction from our board outline shape. When we're done working with a board outline, it's important to lock it just in case. This just means that we don't want to accidentally make any changes to it. To unlock it, simply select it again and select unlock. Okay, so that is how you create a manual board outline. 
In this case, what we want to do is actually import a custom board outline that was drawn in a DXF compatible CAD tool. Now, DXF is just a, a generic file type that is common across many CAD applications. It's very common for maybe another engineer, maybe someone who has something to do with the mechanical enclosure to draw for you. And then you can import it into Presto uh, again through the ECO menu. So we'll go up in the top left here, ECO, select DXF import. Now in this menu, what you want to do is select your DXF file. I'll go ahead and select this ellipses here and navigate to my DXF file. Again, you can download this file from the downloads available for this video. I already have it in this assets folder in my project, and it is this board outline.dxf. Now, I already happen to know that my DXF units are in millimeters. Make sure that this selection here matches what you have in your DXF file. Otherwise, you might get a outline that is shrunken by many orders of magnitude or even larger by many orders of magnitude. There's a couple checkboxes here. What I would recommend is only worrying about the incremental addition for now. Basically, when we import a DXF outline, it's as if we're starting a new outline and starting new in our project. Um, if you don't want to start new and you don't want it to unplace your components, remove all of your cross section options, etc., just select incremental addition. In our case, it's okay for this to be unchecked because we are, again, at the start of our design. But you'll notice that when I import this, it'll unplace this component that we have in our top left corner. So if you ever have issues, just check this. In. Now, the last thing we need to do before we import is make sure that we map our DXF drawing layers to layers on our Presto PCB design drawing. To do that, select this Edit View Layers. The class and subclass sections here will be empty generally, but what it's asking you to do is say, for DXF layer zero, what class and subclass do you want to map that to? So our DXF layer zero, that's where our board outline is drawn. We want that to be drawn on the board geometry class and the design outline subclass. Now, if you have any additional layers in your DXF drawing, they'll be listed here. And then once you're done, you can just select okay. The mapping is already done for us. If you've done multiple mappings, uh, the tool automatically creates a layer conversion file. It's basically the file that holds this mapping information from any previous imports that you've done. That's why I already had some information here. Select yes. And then when you're ready, go ahead and click on import. If this import successful. If you have any issues, click on view log to see any of the maybe errors that you get. Then we can go ahead and hit close. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this board outline to maybe somewhere closer to the center of my canvas. Again, I am the type of person that likes to have their origin in the bottom left of their design. Now, while it might not be a very easy location to select, if I click on my board outline, select pick origin location. I can first snap it to this point here, turn on my grids to a finer grid, and then use that to triangulate that this is the location where I need to put the origin. Now I don't yet have a conductor keepin or component keepin. Again, it is very easy to do simply by selecting the board outline and then checking the conductor keepin and component keepin options and then setting a value. For my conductor keepin, I want them to be at least 10 mils and the component keepin, we want that to be 20 mils from the edge of the board. And here you see that the two are added automatically. If I mouse over them, you can see that the conductor keepin and the component keepin are there. If at any point you want to turn off those, you can go into your visibility, scroll down, and in the geometry section, we have this component keepin and conductor keepin where we can turn off or on these layers. We'll talk more about visibility in future. So we have our board outline now imported. We can also, in this visibility section, click on the 3D view and see that our board outline is being represented in 3D as we expect it to. Switch back to 2D. 
And this is where we're going to start doing some of our component placement. In the next video, we'll look at how to edit our cross section and add additional routing layers to our design. So right now we only have a two layer design, a top layer and a bottom layer. We need to add in two more layers between those. And there's just a few more setup steps that we need to take care of before we get into the nitty gritty or the fun part of PCB design, at least I think so, that is the placement and the routing of all the components. So thank you and see you next time.